Hi everyone, uh, this is Dave from Mountbatten Estates. Uh, today I've got uh, a chap called Paul Hemming from Sealink, who I will be interviewing. Now Paul um, has created this, this very clever uh, app which effectively connects people with subcontractors. Um, fantastic little tool if you wanted to be connected with anyone who you need to pr price up a job. Um, so, Paul, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you introduce yourself, tell us a little bit of what Sealink does and explain how people like me and other people can utilize this, this fantastic app to price and, uh, you know, get, get our projects uh, on, on, on track. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dave, for having me. Thanks for the introduction. So, as Dave said, my name is Paul, Paul Hemming. I am co-founder of a company called Sealink. My background is that of a quantity surveyor. So I'm QS by experience, qualification, sadly. Um, and my career was always spent in contracting. So I actually was a subcontractor um, by experience. And I worked on really large projects like Battersea Power Station, 20 Fenchurch Street, The Shard. In my career, my good friend, uh, Chris, who is a QS as well. Me and him were sat in the pub six years ago talking about subcontract tendering as QSs would, because we are like that. And Chris said to me, Chris was working for a smaller company, working on like high-end residential projects. I was working on these massive projects and we were surprised to find that both of us had exactly the same problem in that doing construction procurement required a lot of paper and needed to be automated. And also the fact that it was very difficult to understand and be connected with very good contractors for very different trades. So let's say if you're a typical main contractor, you might have 20 subcontracts to place. If you're gonna do a competitive tender on those 20 subcontracts, you need five per each trade. So you need at least a hundred and that's for one type of project. So then another hundred for another type, et cetera, et cetera. So the fact that we didn't have that, I was working for this big company, Chris was working for a smaller company. Um, we wanted to rectify that and we wanted to try and build some software. I say we, it was largely Chris's idea. I'm just on the coattails. Um, but yeah, here we are six years later, we've created a system which now works really, really well in London and in the Southeast. And actually at the start of this year, we are now looking for expansion and we're growing across the UK to try and make it a national product. Brilliant. Who would you who would you think is your uh, typical uh, user for this software? Very interesting question because we got it completely wrong to start yeah. with. We we thought that um, so Chris is a main contractor, I was a subcontractor. We thought that our primary user would be main contractors, and main contractors do use the system, do use the software, get great value from it. But what we were actually surprised to find was actually there was a really nice niche market um, in attracting developers developers who want to manage things to construction manage to self-build whatever you want to call it and who don't want to use a main contractor but actually want to kind of cut the main contractor out do the work themselves and yeah we found a really interesting niche with developers of that ilk and uh, so i'd say at the moment we're probably about 70 percent developers self-building 30 percent main contractors using the system um so i've looked at the software um, I find it really ingenious how you, how user friendly and how easy you've made this. So effectively, someone can literally just go on, fill on, fill in a form, put in the details you want, or even simply just upload some drawings. Uh, and effectively, that goes out uh, to, to to the subcontractors. Just explain what that process is, how easy it is, how long does it take, um, and maybe just a few steps that. You know, people can maybe um, uh, put a, a visual, uh, paint a picture, exactly, yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> if you, Dave, were a developer and you wanted to manage projects on your own and you thought, Paul's a QS, he seems like a nice guy, I'll get him to help me do that, right? What would happen historically is you would say, Paul, Here's the, here's the project. I'd say, can you have the drawings, the structural, the services, the architectural? I'd look at those drawings and I would say, okay, Dave, what we have here is a project with, I don't know, 
timber frame, aluminium doors and windows, single ply flat roof, blah, blah, blah. I would break it down into a series of packages. I would allocate drawings and documents to those specific packages and create you a procurement schedule. That process, which would probably have historically taken me or another QS one, two days to go through at the outset, that's something that we have systemized with C-Link. So effectively, rather than giving the drawings to me to have a look at, you give the drawings to C-Link. C-Link reads those drawings as text. It reads those drawings as an image. And it says, Dave, you have got timber frame, aluminium doors and windows, blah, 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 blah. So it does that in a matter of minutes, what we've previously taken in a matter of days. At that point, you decide the packages you want to procure. The packages are then posted to our community of subcontractors who say, hi, I'm interested on the aluminium doors and windows. Hi, I'm interested on the timber windows, timber frame. Sorry. You then have a procurement schedule of interested vetted subcontractors. And those subcontractors, you can then send a tender inquiry to, which then means you get prices back. And all of a sudden, you're in a position where you have really understood your construction costs quickly and you're speaking to the marketplace. Great. Now, something I've just picked up on um, what you've just said, you mentioned vetted uh, subcontractors. Can you just explain a little bit about what that vet uh, vetting process looks like? Yeah, so we do both a pre-qualification and a post-qualification. Our business model is rooted in the concept of wanting to be the antithesis of the yellow pages. So we don't want to be a big long list of every ground worker, of every brick worker in your region. We want to be quite the opposite. We want to be a refined list of the best ground workers, the best brick workers, the best steel workers, etc. So all subbies who come to us have to go through a pretty rigorous vetting process. That vetting process covers off all the boring bits like insurances, accreditations, finances. So it ticks all of those boxes, but then our team of QSs effectively then vet them and they give them an interview. We have references review, we look at portfolio, and effectively those contractors have to impress us so that we then think they would suitably impress our supply chain. We then also post-qualify. So as we're working with them and engaging with them, we're getting, we can see how they're doing in terms of returning prices, whether they're late, if they continually fail to return it, we'd get rid of them. And also how they perform on site, we get feedback from our clients as well. So it's kind of like a full circle view. And to us, it's an incredibly important part of the process. The way I see it and the way I sell it to customers is that everyone wants word of mouth recommendation. Uh, in construction you I used to rely on it when I was a QS because you can't have a uh, hundred subcontractors that you have all the information on in your back pocket yeah. every single day it's just impossible to have let alone 200 or 300 yeah so the way we approach it is that it C-Link is effectively like a scaled word of mouth recommendation it's not yellow pages it's word of mouth but you've got volume there so you can access that volume as either fantastic uh, and just out of curiosity, um, how long does it normally take to try and uh, maybe get some of these tenders back? Is there like a, a, an average time? I mean, I know how long's a piece of string, but on average, when you put something out there, how how long does it roughly take to try and get something back? I mean, it depends on the project, depends on the package. I would typically say uh, between one and two weeks is is about right for, depending on the complexity of the package, let's say, if it's an install only brickwork package, it might take you one week. If it's a supply and install Windows package, it might take you more like two. Brilliant. I've noticed with uh, your software as well, there is um, access to contracts, quick tender and also JCT. Mm. Explain a little bit about um, what access people have when it comes <clears throat> to those type of contracts and how detailed are they? Yeah, so we have um, lots of different types of documents. They're all documents which we've drafted, drafted ourselves. So the most popular uh, documents are our smaller works orders, which um, kind of like a 10 page document, which cover off all the critical elements required by the Housing Act, um, yeah. all the boring legal QSE stuff, but actually is written in such a way that it doesn't scare off people who are receiving it. Um, it's like, Pretty light, pretty light document, but does all the bits that you need it to do. And that's honestly something which I think is what the industry needs, particularly in the SME world. 
We also then have amended JCTs, a labour of the point amended. So we've amended those contracts so that they are more in favour of the person who is issuing them, but they're still relatively balanced. They're comprehensive documents and perhaps suitable for the larger subcontract packages, three, four hundred thousand and above. Um, but yeah, you have access to all those different types of documents through the system. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, where's this software going? Because I don't, you know, is, is have you got like a plan for this over the next five years? Where's it going to scale? Where's it going to go? Have you are you looking at maybe any other features you're looking to bring on board with this? Yeah, because it, you know, I can see so many different facets and spin-offs with this. So, do you want to get, you know, get your thoughts and, and ideas? Well, I can't give you all of our secrets, Dave. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, joking, joking aside. Obviously, there is, um, as I alluded to at the beginning of the show, we are now in a in a place of growth, and we are looking to expand nationally to make it a service that operates wherever you are in the UK, not just in the southeast. So that is target number one for this year, really. Yeah. The product, we have a development team in-house of six, which we're looking to grow. That team is constantly growing on the revolution of the product, but also the evolution of the product. One of the, we have many big plans for the future. One of the primary plans is that we are in a position where we have a marketplace of contractors bidding and tendering on all kinds of different projects. And as part of that, we have really good angle on actual construction costs. We're actually seeing what people are spending, where they're spending it, what the price of chai lining, steelwork, et cetera, is today. Um, and effectively, what we want to be uh, using that data, aggregating that data to then create tools so that a developer like you, Dave, can say, how much is it going to cost me to do this project here in London or, where, or wherever. We already have like a beta tool available. Uh, it's called our cost planning tool, which works quite nicely on certain types of projects. And uh, I really see data as a big driver for us uh, moving forward. Brilliant. Um, you've mentioned uh, quite an interesting <clears throat> point there in terms of um, live data. Uh, First time for pricing. everything. Um, with the with, with the cost of materials constantly going up, you know, having access to that live feed as it were is quite vital um i yeah i can see that being a huge a huge benefit to people absolutely and um not only in the current climate where the cost of materials and to be honest with you, the cost of everything is yeah terrifyingly running away from us all um i think it's about 20 percent we saw in the last 12 True. months so yeah um not ideal far from it but it's also just generally speaking, I believe that the industry and particularly the real estate industry needs a product, deserves a product that allows them to forecast construction costs for a product, for a project, sorry, without the need to invest in one or two weeks of QS's time and the price that comes with that. I think we should, we're in a position now where as a, as a sector, we should say, we've got this data, we can aggregate it, we can give it to people who need it. How accurate are these costs coming in? Is there a big difference between, say, uh, someone coming in, <clears throat> costing it, uh, and is there like a wild difference going on by the time it gets on site and by the time it's, you know, it's getting built out? Is there any differences there? Or do you find actually the pricing is quite, 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 you know, in line? I mean, we're obviously, um, it, it's a competitive tendering portal and therefore a steelwork package may have five prices ranging from 90,000 to 110,000. So the average being a hundred thousand, but we're seeing um, we're using data that obviously aggregates that, but then actually takes through what is actually being spent yeah. um, and what the actual contract is for. There's no doubt that um, in the last 12 months talking 2021 effectively that everyone's construction budgets have been impacted because yeah. it was just a intense month, intense year for yeah. construction costs generally. But we're, start, we're, we're seeing that in the beginning of 2022, it's exactly the same and timber has gone right back up again. So um, yeah, it's not looking particularly rosy from a supply side uh, in that respect. It's definitely no, can't see any uh, signs of easing for the, for the foreseeable, that's for sure. 
Definitely hasn't uh, started. I, I, I did think it was going to ease. Um, I think we talked, didn't we? I did a, yeah. I did a webinar for Nimbus Maps in November, yeah. and then my forecast was that it was going <laughs> to ease its way into yeah. Q1. But yeah. if you look at what's happened in the first three weeks of Q1, it is pretty brutal. The timber yeah. has gone right back up. So, um, yeah, not pretty. Mm. Paul, I've really enjoyed this. I've got real value from it. Um, tell me who you're looking to connect with and how can people connect with you? Um, I'm looking to connect with anyone who is interested in uh, innovation, changing the way they work, particularly interested in working or uh, meeting property developers who are looking to work self-build, interested in meeting main contractors, interested in meeting quantity surveyors as well. You can reach me at... Um, our website is www.c-link.com. My email is paul at c-link.com. Connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to meet absolutely everyone. I'm in networking mode at the moment. Brilliant. Uh, I will make sure that Paul's details are all under the um, under this video as well. Paul, before uh, we leave, I do ask all my guests, have you got like an interesting story it could be good bad or ugly when it comes to what you've maybe seen or experienced within this whole trade so i'll leave it over to you tell us something that you want to leave us with good question good question okay so <clears throat> i mentioned to you that i previously worked on big jobs like the shard and battersea power station yeah i also worked it was it's one of the projects that i'm most proud of from my career is the Walkie Talkie, 20th Fenchurch Street. I'm not sure if you know that building yeah. in uh, Fenchurch Street. Um, so that building, quite famously, um, was, because it was concave and convex, the design, quite famously in the news, started to, the sun started hitting it, and it started beaming down very hot sunlight onto the road yeah. below it. And it quite famously melted uh, part of a Jaguar that was one of the directors <laughs> from one of the subcontractors. So that was Brilliant. a very fun experience. And there was, Brilliant. It, we ended up having to put a different type of solar shading on, on that to prevent it. But there was one funny story during the week or so of summer when there was actually enough sun for it to be causing drama. And that was that after this incident with the Jaguar, you had on the street down there, I can't remember, what, I can't remember the name of the road actually, but um, video, you had reporters and everything down there trying to get a glimpse of whether or not this could happen and you could go into an area where the sun was particularly strong and I was stood down there next to these reporters and because there was this story about the Jaguar they were trying to uh, say that you could cook an egg oh, really? in, the, in the heat which, which was just completely <laughs> false, you couldn't, it wasn't that hot but they, they were doing it and they had a little frying pan and cooker down yeah. down a side street where they were going to prepare it and then they were coming out and saying, Yeah, look, you could even cook cook an egg in this thing. It's brilliant. so dramatic. So yeah. oh my God, <laughs> very brilliant. funny. That is so funny. Paul, thank you so much. Um, I'm sure everyone got some real good value from that. And I will make sure Paul's details are under this for you to contact him directly. But yeah, um, great value, great time. Thanks, Paul. Thanks so much for um, yeah, spending a part of your day with us today and uh, educating us all on C-Link. Thank you very all much right. for having me, Dave. Lovely. Thank you Cheers. so much. Take care.